Larry Pickney is a veteran of the Black Panther Party and former Minister of Interior of the Republic of New Africa. Um, he He's basically a, the real deal when it comes to activism, and he's been um, targeted by federals, uh, federal authorities. He's been put in positions where, uh, well, sort of like what we have with some of these patsies where we, where we find FBI informants coming in and providing all the resources and all the thought and all the brain power necessary. Um, I don't know I'm saying this is in Larry's case, but where we see the FBI basically entrapping these people. And uh, without further ado, let's bring on Larry Pigney. How are you doing today, Larry? Hey, I'm great, Rob. It's fantastic to hear your voice. And I want to thank everyone, uh, and especially you and Alex and all of the staff. Thanks so much. Well, we're glad to have you. It's, it's good to have uh, a real activist out there who really is working for positive change in the community and not just this theoretical change that really isn't anything but a control mechanism. And um, how, how do you feel about uh, the stories that were coming out of people saying they were going to riot if Obama loses and also about how they uh, people were tweeting that they were going to assassinate Mitt Romney? Well, you know, I think that this is this is a part of the corporate stream control manipulation apparatus. You know, if somebody wants to riot, uh, if, if Obama loses, well, we're already looking at an idiot, aren't we? And uh, when, it, when it comes to all of these kinds of stories, I think that that's a wider part, a wider part of uh, provocateurs. And when I say provocateurs, I'm talking now on a corporate government level. Get people riled, excited, uh, in a negative fashion. Get people in fear. Keep people in fear of each other. You know, I have heard, uh, I, in fact, a relative of mine said that to me, Larry, did you hear that so-and-so, that, you know, black people might riot or so-and-so might riot? Well, you don't want to riot. Let's be blunt. We've got an economic situation that is absolutely outrageous. We have a situation where we have a predator drone missile president who has his own personal kill list. We have uh, a president who has declared war on the people of this nation and of the entire world. And you know, we have, it, it, talking about riot, let's riot with our minds. Forget all that nonsense about rioting. Half of them, I wonder if they, they can even spell the word riot. And I don't care what the color is, black, white, brown, red, or yellow. You know, we're all in this struggle together, or we should be. So exactly, exactly. Let's go after the true enemy and not this fake enemy where it's trying to pit the people of America against each other. Because that's all it's trying to do. That's what this type of talk does. All it does is ferment this thing. And, and I just want to bring this up. You were talking about a drone president. Pakistan interior minister, 80% killed by drones are innocents. Only 2% right. are militant leaders. So they're just going around just shooting people and blowing them up with That's these right. drones. It's indiscriminate right. and it's disgusting. And it's in our name. It's in our That's name. Right. It's murder. Let's be blunt. Barack Obama is a war criminal. That's what he is, folks. Let's wake up, smell the roses. Obama is a war criminal. And he's declared war, as I said, not only on the people in Pakistan or Afghanistan or Yemen. I, the list is almost endless. North Africa and Libya, East Africa and Somalia, these people being killed overwhelmingly have nothing whatsoever to do with the so-called war on terrorism. The war on terrorism is a war on the American people and on everyday people by none other than our corporate controlled Democrat and Republican government. That's what this is about. And we need to wake up and get real. Put that color nonsense aside. Yes, there's racism. So what else is new? We have to deal with this struggle collectively. We must deal with it collectively. Sorry, I, I went on a rant there. No, that's quite all right. It's, I, I appreciate your rants. I, I remember the first time you came on, we, we had you cranked up in the other room as we were getting ready for the nightly news because you are a breath of fresh air. You got passion. You've got intensity. And, and you really know where the power structure is. And you get a lot of people out there that, that want to just yell and scream, but they're not even sure who they're yelling and screaming at. 
And, um, I mean, it's just, you understand how it is. I want to quickly give out the, because uh, we are doing our 48-hour money bomb. You can go to InfoWarsMoneyBomb.com or call in by phone, 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. And, Larry, let me, let me ask you this. When did you first become aware of InfoWars.com and the Alex Jones radio show? You know what? I had heard of the show, I would say, only about, Oh, maybe two, two and a half years ago. Uh, and then I believe about a little over a year ago, someone told me, you know what, you need to tune in. You need to listen to this. You need to watch this. So I'd say a little over two years ago. Right. And and so do you agree that, that basically InfoWars is the tip of the spear in this fight against basically the Republicans and the Democrats, that corporate... Um, corporate control structure that sits on top, and then above that, it's these you know these vulture bankers. Um, Absolutely. I, I mean, I don't know who else out there is as, as big as this organization, and who can bring the fight to them, and who can get issues out there uh, better than we can at this point. Well, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that info for wars needs to be supported. All right, I'm just going to be blunt about it because it is very, very rare. In fact. I, I frankly don't know of any other major entity such as InfoWars that is really putting itself on the line to get the truth out there. When I say the truth, I mean the information to the people so that people really, really have it. So, yes, and let me also say this. Let me be clear about this. You all didn't ask me to say this, but I'm going to say it. Support InfoWars. Support it because by supporting InfoWars, this organization, what you're doing is you're supporting the dissemination of critical thinking, information. And I love the term InfoWars because sisters and brothers, brothers and sisters, that's what it's all about, InfoWars. That's right. And there is no race when we all come together. It's all for one and one for all. We have to stand together. We have to realize that it's our brothers and sisters that are going out there and being put into tent cities because of this economic implosion that has been designed. It is the offshoring. It's the given. The, when they say free trade agreements, what that is is a code word to send all the factories offshore to China and then ship the goods back in. So you don't have manufacturing jobs. You don't have those jobs that People who didn't have a college education or even those who had college education could go out and get a decent paying job that provided for a family. We just don't have that anymore. It is just going to the to the to the tubes, really. It's literally heading to China. I just want I, I drew a little picture here. We are actually one quarter of of the way to our goal at this point, uh, two hundred and twenty five thousand. And we want to get to a million and we really do need the money to make that next jump. And it, it basically is like a hyperspace jump that we go to when we get this uh, money bomb money, and it lets us take it to the next level. So we're one quarter away. We're 17 hours left. This is the time now where if you can't give any money, then send the link to all your friends. Send the link to all the people on your email list. Send it to the Facebooks, the MySpaces. Get the word out and get people, hey, contribute $20. We get 100,000 people contributing $20. We're there. That's it, you know, and, and we can do this. We can really, we can reach this goal. We can show the trolls and the haters out there that people do care about information and people care about getting it out there in the face of, of what we're facing, which is, you know, total tyranny if we don't win. That's right. That's right. And the fact of the matter is, you know, I was listening to the news earlier, uh, um, just before I came on, and I was listening to uh, someone talking about General Electric, okay, GE, which of course is one of uh, Obama's biggest supporters, along with Lockheed, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, I want to point out, for example, to the listening audience, and I would urge them to support InfoWars, all right? But I want to point out, for example, uh, give an example of what you just said, Rob. General Electric, GE, people think about light bulbs and power. Well, what we ought to be thinking about are weapons, because GE makes timers, timers for bombs, for missiles. Uh, it does a great deal of work on nuclear submarines. When I say work, I mean they make money, folks. We're talking millions and ultimately trillions of dollars. No bid contracts. That's right. That's right. So also understand when it comes to the media, that's why I said I love that name, InfoWars, because that's what it's about. We, we must free our minds. And this is precisely the opposite of what 
the corporate uh, Democrat and Republican uh, police state structure wants us to do. They don't want us to free our minds. They want just the opposite. General Electric, folks, did you know that GE owns 49% of NBC? How's that for democracy? How are you going to get news from NBC or any of those other corporate stream media outlets, including, by the way, PBS and MSNBC? All right. How are you going to get real news, honest news, when these, these, these entities are, in fact, controlled by these blood-sucking, avaricious corporations? Please. That's right. And they've taken a long time to build this grid. It didn't spring up overnight. It, it really has been a long, uh, long term job for them to to create this pyramid of evil that w that we're facing. I mean, we really are facing up against, you know, not a ton of people, but people with a lot of money, people with control of a lot of money. And they are doing it with pressure from above and pressure from below. Uh, I have a, a story here. Welfare spending jumps 32% in Obama's presidency. These are people that aren't being empowered. They are being dependents. They're becoming dependents of the state, and they are going to follow the state, and they're going to get those messages that are, hey, do you want this? Do you, you still need this, right? Then vote for Obama and vote for or even voting for Romney. It's going to be the same thing. You got to what, what you got to do, I think, is not vote or vote third party so we can get some real debates in here um, coming up. You know, we get that five percent for the Libertarian Party and they get some money and it, it kind of levels the playing field. But we definitely don't have two parties. This this total farce that we have this two party system. I mean, these guys, they both want war. They both want to spend our money. And they both want to control what we do, and, and, and they just keep ratcheting it up slowly and surely. Larry, what's going on in your world now? What, what's, what are the biggest issues that you're dealing with? Well, the, the, the biggest issues, I think, at the moment uh, that I'm dealing with is trying to get people to understand basically what we're talking about. And what I'm referring to is that the system is controlled, that it's rigged. I'm trying to get people in my articles that I write for blackcommentator.com and intrepidreport.com to understand that it's rigged, folks, it's rigged. We might even consider, for that matter, boycotting this fake election. You know, it's nothing more than a C-election anyway. You know, what are we really voting for? You know, the right to, to, to have the Electoral College make our votes null and void? Is that what we're voting for? Are we writing, I mean, I mean let, let's really fundamentally Let's be radical. And when I say radical, all I mean is root, R-O-O-T. Go to the root of it, the root of it, okay? Let's be radical, critical thinkers about this. And, Rob, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to urge people, uh, even though I know it enrages the powers that be, so be it, uh, to, to critically think. I'm trying to get people of all, all colors, black, white, brown, red, and yellow people, to understand that we are all being pimped, used, had, bamboozled, as Brother Malcolm X used to say. We're being bamboozled. Whether it's Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, Democrat, Republican, it's time for the people, the people, everyday people to take this system. So as, as always, Rob, that's, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm writing, I'm writing, I'm doing what organizing I can to get people to think and then to act accordingly. We've got to do this. There's so much at stake. There's also so much at stake right now. Support InfoWars. Support InfoWars. Support the ability of, of an entity such as this, an organization such as this, to keep getting this information out. That is absolutely critical. I totally agree. And we were just throwing up a couple of your articles from blackcommentator.com and intrepidreport.com. I mean, and you're basically saying what you just said there is what you're writing about. You're, you know, uh, that we're we have to all come together, and what we're seeing is not real. It, it, it is totally this fake, manufactured. I mean, th they had an agreement before they went into the second debate of, you know, we couldn't bring up follow up questions. You, nobody's going to go off script, or you know, here's your talking points. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then people still made a big deal out about it, and it, it doesn't mean anything. It's totally, exactly. in this next one, I think there's, what, there's one Monday night? It's going to be fake, too. Yes, of course. I mean, this is a fake system talking about a fake election trying to keep the people or make the people fake. If it's one thing that's not a fake, it's we the people. 
and it's time for we the people to regain our humanity. Take it back, because the fakesters, the tricksters, the bamboozlers out there are doing everything that they can to control. And you're so right. You're so right, Rob. They, people talk about debate. What debate? How can they call it a debate between the Democrats and the Republicans? That's like somebody sitting on the telephone talking to themselves. There wasn't a debate. It was an absolute farce. That was a play. Somebody yeah. wrote the script already. I mean, the script was already done. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And, and I got I, I got a degree in theater, and I know exactly how you put a play on. And, you know, you have different actors, and you have surprises, and you have different uh, things you do to, to suspend people's disbelief, to make them think it is real. It's real. Mm -hmm. And it's not real. These are two actors, and they're not even very good. It's, it's sad. It's sad that this is the, the, the best that we're putting up here, is a so-called best, and, uh, and this is what we get. Uh, Larry, are you interested in taking some phone calls? Sure. That's, if that can in any way be helpful, I'd love to. All right, let's load up the phones. You can call us now at 877-789-ALEX. That's 877-789-ALEX. And, Larry, do you go out and uh, appear anywhere in public? Or is, uh, do you have any events coming up? Well, for, not as of yet. I have the last the last event that I spoke at in public, uh, the last major event, was at the university or Syracuse University College of Law. Uh, and I was speaking about basically just some of the same things we're talking about today. Uh, but my uh, upcoming events, I will certainly make sure people know about them in uh, black through intrepid report and black commentator well when you go to these like say when you went to syracuse how were there a lot of people interested in what you had to say did you have a big crowd or do you are, are these students already been brainwashed i mean what what is your opinion <laughs> I, I i like your being blunt that's great <laughs> uh <laughs> The fact of the matter is, is a large percentage of them were already brainwashed in that. But the beauty of that particular situation was that there were a lot of co uh, a number of community people there who didn't even attend uh, Syracuse University, in addition to the law students, uh, etc. So it was fantastic. It was a great opportunity to really put it on the law students. Say, look, you know, are you for real? Are you shucking or jiving? Do you mean what you say? And by the way, who are you working for? Some, uh, or who, what is your objective? Is it to work for some big corporate uh, uh, firm and make tons of money at the expense of the poor folk, everyday folk of all colors? I was able to do that. And it was great in, the sense, in that sense because community people, poor folk were there, and they were extremely supportive. So the message is getting out there. Well, that's good. People who aren't under the influence of the uh, of the magic mainstream media pixie dust are awake, and it's it's mainly it's common sense. I mean, a lot of these people know what's going on, and it's just a matter of they just need to know that other people are out there. I mean, I remember when I first discovered Alex Jones, I didn't know there was other people who really thought like I did. Um, you know, I talked to some professors when I was getting out of college. You know, I'd read the, the book None Dare Call It Conspiracy. And and also one by Ralph Nader called Who Runs Congress. Those two right. books really woke me up onto like one on an international level and one on a national level on just how the system is being scammed. Mm -hmm. And I talked to some professors and I'm like, well, you know, you sometimes you gotta go along to get along. And mm -hmm. you know, it's just don't speak out, just go along to get along, and you'll do fine in this world. You're a smart guy. You just just settle down, you know, because I was getting fired up about this stuff and I was wanting to put on productions and I was, I was, uh, you know, really pissing off the uh, older, um, the uh, professors because I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to put on stuff and I wanted to make people think. And, and one thing when you're talking about these law students, which, which really I, I like to see now is this jury nullification. I think that's something where we can really make some changes is getting well-informed juries because they just had a case up in New Hampshire where there was a 55-year-old guy growing uh, marijuana in his backyard for his own personal use. And the jury said, you know what, we're not going to put this guy in jail. We're not going to ruin his life and his children's life because he, he's not hurting anybody. He's doing it for himself. He's not selling it. And we're not going to throw the book at him. And they just let him off just like that. Right. Right on. And that's, right on. that's what it is. I think that's the that's a, a spot there we can really take on is getting informed juries. And that's one thing when you do order any product from InfoWars, we do send you out a citizen's rule book, which has 
the whole jury handbook in there, the well-informed jury handbook. I don't know the exact name of it right now. In fact, I'll look for it in a second if we got one in here. But it really does give you all the steps. The thing, you know, juries, jurors are allowed to ask questions. I've never seen a jury ask questions because they don't know that they can ask questions. And that's the key. The key is giving them those nuggets of information where they can just take it and run with it. Because people will do the right thing as long as they know what to do. That's right. And we have to understand, don't go for the hype. They want to tell us that people are uh, fundamentally or intrinsically evil. That is not true. People are not intrinsically evil. People are intrinsically open. They are intrinsically good. But what happens is we become manipulated, controlled. We played off against each other. And the thing about juries, I believe me, I know, having, having many times bumped heads, to put it very mildly, with this so-called legal system, I, I, a so-called justice system, in reality, it's the system of injustice. I love what you just talked about. Wh which state was that, Rob, did you say? That was in New Hampshire. And I think that if you like to type in keyword, New Hampshire, 55-year-old Rastafarian uh, jury nullification, and it'll, it'll pop right up. In fact, I'm, I'll do that right now when we go to this call. And uh, I'll bring up. And then there was another one that I just read where... Um, you know, they nullified another case in another state. So it is happening. If people are getting informed. There's people out there that they make this their life mission to go out and just inform people about the well-informed juror. Because that is where we do have power. That, that is a spot where you can have immediate change on the system. And that's what we need to do is go out there and take on the system and not be afraid. You that's know? right. That's we, right. We got a few callers lined up. Let's go to uh, Mark in California. Do you have a question for Larry Pickney? Hey, gentlemen. How you doing? We're All doing right. great. How you doing? Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm pretty familiar with that jury nullification. Also, uh, there was a book that I read, David Barton, and they said that the jury has, you know, the right to, uh, well, uh, the punishment um, if, the, if the person's found guilty or whatever. So, but I've been in a jury where I actually heard the judge say, uh, you know, there's not going to be any jury nullification. He, I remember back then I just said I couldn't believe it, you know. And it was a hot topic about 10, 10 years ago, but they do have the right. It's, yeah, it's we need to young. bring it back. I, I th And here, here's the article right here. You guys can bring it up on my computer. New Hampshire jury acquits pot-growing Rastafarian. And uh, huh. basically the governor signed a bill declaring in all criminal proceedings the court shall permit the defense to inform the jury of its right to judge the facts and application of the law in relation to the facts in controversy. Which I guess means they can nullify if they want to. That right. sounds like lawyer talk to me. But but that's how, you know, and and I think this is, this is the tip of the iceberg because now this is happening, especially with marijuana cases. I mean, this is just, this it's a travesty. This is a medicine. It can be used industrially. I mean, my slogan is, is, I think we should be growing it in Texas, grow hemp, grow Texas, because that is how we're going to, that's a new industry we can start now that we don't have currently in this country. We import the stuff in, and we could be an exporter of it and have, we have, we have so much time, like you could have millions of growing seasons with it. But anyway, Larry, uh, what, do you, what do you think about what the caller just said? Well, I certainly, I concur, I'm, and, I, and I, want to thank, I want to thank the caller very much. I think he's calling from California. That's my old home, home state, California. Uh, I, I, I think that what we're really talking about, speaking of California, is what we used to say in the Black Panther Party. I'm talking about the real Black Panther Party, not, this, not those frauds, the new Black Panther Party. Uh, we used to say in the party, all power to the people. That's what this struggle is all about, all power to the people. So it, 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 it just brings joy to my heart. You know, Rob, you said we've got to stand up. You're right. We've got to stand up, band together, not be afraid. They want us to be afraid. The hell if we're going to be afraid. No, we're going to stand up, band together, protect each other, and change this damn rotten, filthy, corrupt political system. I hear you. You're hearing Larry Pickney out on the airwaves today on this 2012 48-hour money bomb, and we have Tom in Connecticut. Tom, how's it going today? I'm doing very well, thank you. It's a pleasure to talk to both of you. And, yes, I, I've donated uh, $25, and um, I figured I'd do my little my part. Um, Larry, it's, it's so good to hear from you. It's so good to hear you talking out there because I know that you've uh, – been involved with a lot of things like the free breakfast for kids and you know health care and 
political uh, education classes that people get to know this stuff. I, I remember I, I was 12 in 1970 in the New Haven County area, and I'm sure you know all about um, what happened out there. And uh, I want to know how, if the FBI is still involved in the COINTELPRO with uh, the Black Panthers to this day, and also um, I was wondering if um, some of the old crew from that era are joining you and uh, trying to get the message out about unifying the people as opposed to the, so that we can oppose the elite and uh, get our country back. Absolutely. And, and thank you so much for, for that's a good question. Uh, absolutely. Let me answer it as best I possibly can. And let me say, first of all, that yes, I do stay in touch with veterans of the party. In fact, before I was on the program today, I was in contact uh, with the sister Kilu and Yasha, who, uh, by the way, speaking of Connecticut, was originally from Connecticut, was in the party in Connecticut, and then, then later in the party in, in California, in the Bay Area. So yes, she's only one of many uh, um, you know, veterans of the party that, that I do stay in touch with, or I should say we stay in touch with one another and try to get this message out. It is very difficult, of course, because today the FBI, the National, uh, well, the NSA, the FBI, there, there are over 14 different intelligence agencies. And folks, it's not just intelligence, it's agent provocateuring. So there's, this is still going on. Cointelpro, ha Cointelpro, counterintelligence program, has more into a lot of different insidious forms. One of those forms is that it has been legally, check this out now, legally codified in the so-called National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, that Obama signed uh, on, on December 31st, 2011. And so to answer your question directly, yes, Pro is still very active. Yes, in fact, if anything, it's, it's even more insidious today and unfortunately, we've got to get off of our horses, get off the saddles, and get out there. Well, not unfortunately, it's really fortunate, but we must get out there and do what we were doing in the 60s and the 70s. We've got to educate, agitate, organize, you know, and, and, and obviously you are aware of that. Uh, and it's just, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so very, very much. Hey, Tom, thank you for your support as well. We have time for one more call. I'm going to go to Nicholas in Vegas. You're our tail gunner today. What is your question for Larry Pigney? For you, Rob, and then uh, Mr. Pigney can chime in if he wants. Is that okay? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Um, yes, I've been trying to get a hold of you and uh, Mr. Uh, one of your new hosts on the show about getting Sophia Stewart, the mother of the Matrix and Terminator, on the show. And I was curious, uh, what's the best way to do that? Because I've sent you guys some press releases in the past. Well, uh, the, I guess the best thing to do is send me an email, robd at infowars.com. Put Hey Rob in the subject line, that, and that's the best way to get in touch with me. Let's go. Um, so do, do you have a question for Larry? Uh, no, not specifically. Okay. No. Well, yeah, that's the best way to get in touch with me. I'm going to let you go. I want to get one more call in for Larry. We got Miguel in North Dakota. Let's go to Miguel, and you will be our tail gunner today. Yeah, thanks for having me, and I uh, appreciate you for uh, being being part of the show, Larry. Uh, I wanted to commend you about when you spoke up about uh, about riots. Uh, it's my belief when it comes to rioting uh, that the government wants a hostile confrontation, and we as the people need to be uh, sensible about the matter of protesting in a uh, respectable way. I was wondering, um, as far as, you know, when it comes to Occupy movement and whatnot, what's a more sensible way that we can be, uh, I guess the word is that to have more camaraderie and uh, to, to, to speak up in a sensible way about this? That's a good I question. Think, I, th I think that, and thank you, thank you. And you're in North Dakota? Yeah, but I'm from Vallejo, California, but I'm actually working up here right now. Oh, my God, my God, Vallejo. I know Vallejo very, very, very well. Anyway. Uh, yes, I, I think that it's very important uh, for us, and this may sound simple, but it's very difficult for many people. First, we have to be honest with each other. All this PC nonsense where we can't say this and can't say that, we got to cut that out. Be honest with each other. We're going to disagree sometimes, but we're going to agree overwhelmingly about our common interests. 
I think the Occupy movement was a good beginning, but only a beginning in this sense, in the 21st century, because the struggle has been going on a long time. So I have a great deal of hope, a great deal of hope uh, uh, for what's ahead. I, I, I am determined to break through the barriers of color, of gender, of, of any other barriers that this corporate government puts up to try and block us. We've got to come together. We'll have our differences, as Malcolm said, in the closet. But when we come out, we're going to be united. You know, one thing I always liked about the original Black Panthers was that, you know, in addition to educating and, and feeding and, and providing resources for people locally, they like to open carry guns. They walked around with shotguns and said, you know what, you're not going to push us around government. We don't care. We're carrying guns. You want to go? We're right here. We're not backing down, and but we're not going to be. We're not going to strike first. We're just going to hold our guns. How do you feel about gun ownership, Larry? I, look, defense. I, I think don't we have a constitution? Well, yeah. I have. I have to really wonder about that after <laughs> what Barack, or what Obama has done, uh, and and these Republican cohorts of his. But constitutionally, it's all right. And and as far as going back as far as the days of the, of the original Black Panther Party, the party was originally called the Black Panther Party for self-defense, all right? And I also want to emphasize to everyone that we work with all people, black, white, brown, red, and yellow people, all people of all colors, which is also one of the reasons that the government was extremely upset at us and determined to destroy us, and one of the reasons I was so viciously uh, attacked. Wow. And, and you know, we're, we're out of time today, Larry, but I want to get you on uh, maybe next week or the week after on the nightly news. And we could talk about how you were demonized and how basically the government came in and totally destroyed the Black Panther Party. And now they've given this rebirth to this new Black Panther Party, which isn't really for the people. It's for these little special interests that kind of run behind the scenes and say, say this, say this. Yeah, you know, these little control freak people. But we That's appreciate right. you coming on today for the Money Bomb, and uh, we will talk to you soon. I'll get in touch with you right after this. I'll send you an email, and we'll get you scheduled on the nightly news, because I, I like your spirit, man. I'd like to get more of that out there to the people. Thank you, and stay strong. All right, well, I'll do that. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.